You are listening to the Imaginal Podcast, a place that protects and explores what we need to actualize our uniqueness. And like the caterpillar who carries its butterfly blueprint in its imaginal cells all the way to the chrysalis and then melts into liquid before transforms, we too have an inner knowing that can tell us how to make our wings. Hi, it is Sauce, of course. (laughs) How are you? How is your week? So today I want to pose a question and I really want you to look at it and think about it and don't dismiss whatever is coming up for you, but stay with it and see where it takes you and really, really contemplate your answers. And you might know from the title, but the question is, what dream is not letting you go? Too often, oh, I got excited, (laughs) too often we keep these things quiet. Too often we put our permission into the hands. Look, I'm getting so worked up over this. Too often we put our permission into the hands of one person who said something a long time ago. And also, again, this goes out to all of you, all of whom are evolved and successful, and you've contributed so much and you show up amazingly. It's you who I want. Well, everyone really, but I want you to even look deeper to consider what else is in you. And as you consider this, don't rule anything out, okay? Don't, don't nix them before they have a chance to breathe because someone else probably told you otherwise or society told you otherwise. We take on messaging and we keep sometimes the best parts of who we are dormant. So what dream keeps calling to you? I'll note this too. If something isn't coming to you immediately, you might find some clues in the ways you feel when you see someone else's life and you feel like, oh my gosh, I wish I could do that. If that is is coming up for you, look at that and wonder about why you feel like that isn't part of your script, why that is something that you feel excluded from, and then bring that up and see what happens. Also, what did you do when you were little? What did you love? as a child that got left behind, be curious around that. What did you love as a child? And then you got more serious or who knows, whatever reason we leave these things behind. Look into your daydreams. When you want to escape reality, in quotes, what do you daydream about doing or being? And in a tender way, did anyone ever crush you by something they said, declaring that you would never be good at something? If it was crushing, very kindly look into that space because there's, there might be a love for something there. And granted, sometimes we are in a life season where we might not have the time or the leverage to do certain things, but still like stay in relationship with that thing and court it, you know, romance it and tend to it and nurture that relationship with it. Keep it alive, keep it with you rather than keeping it in the, I could never do that bucket. A lot of it is, in the ways we think about ourselves and what we are allowed to do. What are we allowed to express? How are we showing up? So some of the things, whether or not we have time to pursue the grander things, which some of you have time right now, (laughs) it's all, so much of it comes down to agency. I'm sort of bopping all over the place. Bop, bop. Um, So, whether or not it's a big dream that you want to go after right now, now is a good day to step into it. 
or it's something that you want to nurture and and develop for the future, or whether it's something that is maybe more immediate, something that you can do, some some quality within yourself that you want to cultivate. Like, did anyone ever tell you that you weren't funny? Did anyone ever tell you that you you were really quiet and that they sort of labeled you as someone that never spoke up? But inside, you know you're really funny. And inside, you know that you have a lot to say. And maybe you've done that to a certain degree. But are there ways that you can expand on that and really step into your own becoming? What are the things that keep calling to you? I'd really love for you to feel into the possibility of all that your life can be and all the ways that you can express yourself. And just so you know, you might want to dismiss it. All along the way, there will be so many voices that come up and say, no. And so come in kindly, always, right? Always with compassion. And also bring in the wonder of the what ifs. Start to put in the details of what if. What would that be like? And feel, feel into the colors and the possibility and the the freedom and the expanse. Let the expansiveness just infiltrate you, your being, your mind and your body and really think and feel into that possibility. I'm totally giving you a pep talk, I know, but I don't want these dreams to not manifest. I don't want who you are to be kept by some uninvited something. What I'd like to do right now is explain how I hope this podcast can help to catalyze all of these things for people. It might not be that clear just by listening to random episodes how all of this fits together, but what I think is really amazing about letting yourself dream is that there is a synergy both in the hope and the realization and the actualization of these colorful lives with going back and healing some of the parts of our past that feel broken. Because it's usually those broken pieces that keep us smaller, right? So in this podcast, what I'm asking you to do is really dream, really look, think about the possibilities unfiltered. And then very tenderly, we look and see what is it that has kept us from that? Because we wouldn't be silencing that dream this whole time if there was an easy inroad into it. But that doesn't mean it's not meant to be yours and meant to be fulfilled. So this podcast is about really actualizing all that is meant to be you and all that is meant to be us and how we can afford that for one another by breaking the fourth wall of what it means to be human so that we can see and bring healing to the parts that are needing a salve So in some of the episodes, I'm going to get you to think and be curious and take the limitations off. And then in other episodes, we're going to bring a salve of healing. We're going to share. We're going to show how relatable it is to be human. And if you think back to the interviews, so with Rafaela, There was some societal messaging that kept her from living a life that was really so meaningful for for her. And that's like just one little bit of her episode. But if you think to Daniel's episode, they were the critical voices from bullies from our childhood. And as you can see from both of them, they are these vibrant people that change lives. And in order for them to break into these places, There had to be a lot of very tender healing and a bringing of a self. And it's a continual process. I, I think for most of us is to continue to be tender with our, our places of hurt 
And then if you think to Jade's episode, sometimes it's our health or our bodies that may or may not allow us to do certain things. And so how is it that we we tend to these incarnations? How do we love them? How do we get into a relationship that is loving with our own selves and with each other? And of course, those are just a few examples from these episodes that were so full of things, <laughs> including tree climbing and plumbing the depths of the Mariana Trench and tag playing cats and so much more. But all to say that each of these episodes give so much insight as to how human, very human it is to be held back in some way or another. But also, did you ever notice, did you ever notice that I always say, but also, as if my heart is just exploding outside of my body, or that I've climbed a mountain and I've gotten to the top and I put the flag in the ground and I'm like, but also. <laughs> and on that note, La, um, some of my coaching clients will laugh at this because I often change this word, this, this verbiage. I really don't want to say in this case, but also. I want to say and also or while also, because I in no way want to negate what I was saying earlier as we honor what is. So while also, <laughs> there are ways through, and on that road through, you'll find much beauty and much healing and probably a lot of camaraderie. So all in all, it's about bringing to light the things that are so relatable in order to help free each other up to heal from the uninvited circumstances or the uninvited comments or the society's messaging or whatever it is that has made us feel marginalized so that you really can be everything that you are meant to be. It's also about turning on its head the idea that we have to prove ourselves before we can do something or be a certain way and turning that on its head so we know our worth and then out of that comes the natural expression of who we are. But that's not the easiest to do and it's really a lot harder to do in isolation. So here we hold stories for each other and we can see ourselves in one another and we can heal each other and free up each other. And that is my hope for this podcast. One of the hopes. At the same time, I want us to enjoy these present moments and laugh. You know, there, this episode was a little bit serious. Um, but to, to laugh and cry freely and to love and to feel loved and to, and to extend love and grace and all of these things that come with being human. So beautifully human. We are going to talk more and more about how to step into these dreams or unleash the parts of us that were told to be quiet but for now, I'd love for you to just identify, begin to really think into and feel into all of these parts of you that you really love and see what's there. And if stories come up or if old hurts surface, come in with so much compassion. That's what was supposed to happen. We weren't supposed to hide that hurt. As we heal these places, we then become more and more free to step into them. So what calls to you? For me, my biggest dream is also my biggest pain point. And some of you might know a little bit about this, but recently I haven't talked about it. But my biggest dream and love and thing that I really love would really want to experience is to sing. And it's actually my biggest area of shame too. 
And I will talk about this more, but I was criticized very, very heavily for it when I was younger, but it was the thing I loved most, and I went four decades without singing. There are so many parts to this story, and I don't think now is the time to tell them, but I will say that I finally got to the point where I thought, I just can no longer live my life pretending that I don't want to do this. And it it hasn't been easy at all. I was just telling someone that I feel like I'm trying to like build a mountain out of grains of rice. And every day I spend a long time with a pair of chopsticks and I have moved three grains of rice over to the mountain. But... I also have never felt more like myself. <laughs> so that's, that's good. <laughs> Time, there are times that I want to bawl out of frustration because it has been both an emotional and physical challenge. Again, long, really long story. But for now, I know that I am more me when I sing I wanted to say try to sing. <laughs> Our verbiage matters. I know that I am more me when I am singing and learning to sing than I have ever been when I put that dream or put that experience in a box, in a dark cave, in a place of shame. That's not me. And that's not you. So there, it's an act of devotion for me to sing every day, to move those grains of rice. And you know what? I think sometime there's going to be a whole giant bowl full of rice that comes toppling down onto the mountain. Oh my gosh, maybe a pickup truck of rice. Who knows? But I think this mountain is going to be built. Let me correct my verbiage, actually. This, there's already a mountain. It might not be the mountain that I want it to be or that it will become later, but it already is a mountain and I'm already experiencing it. That's the other thing. I'm already more me than I ever was in all those decades of excluding myself from that experience. So again, we're going to talk more later about how to move into these places but for now, what is calling to you? And quiet all the voices except your own knowing and see where it takes you. I'd love to know. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your time. And I'd love to connect with you on Instagram. I'm at Lori Sase, L-O-R-I-S-A-S-E. Or my website, laurisase.com. Mostly dream and don't dismiss it. Dream, think, be curious. Feel into the possibility and then let yourself imagine the what ifs. And head into those places. And to be clear, I know that I talked about this rice moving mountain that I'm creating. But it's not always that arduous. Sometimes it looks like a brick wall, but really it's a curtain and it just requires a little change in belief or a shift in narrative or story. So see what comes up for you. But if you happen to find yourself in a season that's a little bit harder or presents a bit of a challenge and you find yourself moving some rice grains over into your mountain, don't stop and hit me up. Because I got a really good pair of chopsticks. All right, I'll see you next week. <laughs>